Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, August 24th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's uh, just a quick video update on Cristobal, which has now formed in the Bahamas. This is what we've been waiting for. The Storm 96L has finally become named a tropical storm. And we can see the center of the, of the circulation uh, north of Mayaguana, and this is what we've been waiting for. Most of our questions are now answered simply because the circulation has formed in a specified location, and it has an extension to the north here. So the whole circulation is right here, north and northeast of the Bahamas. And this is key because if it had been back here, things would have been different. But now that it's now that it's up here, um, as it moves northwest, uh, as this front lifts out and this uh, first trough lifts out. The next short wave that comes down will miss it, um, but because of the way the ridge is set up over here over the southeastern US, uh, this is going to be too far north by the time it gets in here to slip under the ridge, and it's probably going to move out to sea now. And if it had been back here 100 miles further to the southwest, then we would have probably been talking about something that could have gone over the Florida Peninsula and done something like this. Um, but that's not the case. These 100 miles are going to make the difference. And now that it's up here, it's probably going out. This is the latest model spaghetti spread showing everything now, showing the north and northeast track out to sea, well away from the eastern seaboard. Uh, the Bahamas still might get some backside rains and gusty winds from this, but they're not on the strong side of the system. Most of the weather is on the eastern side. Turks and Caicos still getting some heavy weather this morning. That will clear out eventually with time. And this will take its time moving northwest over the warm waters near the Bahamas, and this will allow it to gradually strengthen. There is going to be some dry air and northerly shear coming down behind this trough, impacting the circulation over the next couple of days that will probably impede intensification. But after it gets past that and starts moving northeast over these warm Gulf Stream waters out over the open North Atlantic, these types of storms usually tend to develop very nicely. And this could become a fairly, fairly nice looking hurricane before it's all said and done. But we now know this will likely all take place over the open water. We'll probably Probably not be impacting the United States. Might, you know, clip Bermuda with some of this weather on the eastern side, but we'll have to see. Uh, it probably will split the uprights here and move out. And uh, now we know. This took a little bit longer than usual to figure out. Usually we'll know whether uh, it's going to affect the U.S. before or now, uh, but we do know this was just one of those balancing situations where it was very difficult to tell uh, without the full support of the computer models and knowing exactly where the center formed. So next time we have a broad wave, just remember, until we know exactly where it is, we don't exactly know where it's going. That's the lesson with Cristobal here. Uh, looking forward now, once Cristobal starts moving out, is there any other threats? We're now nearing the peak of the hurricane season. Things really ramp up by this time of year historically. And uh, you know, there's some waves back here. Uh, some of the models uh, show more waves developing by the end of the month and into September in the Central Atlantic, but those are many days away um, from being something that we should think about, and there's no guarantees at all yet. Um, but looking forward into week two, this is the Canadian Ensemble mean showing a lot of orange here. This indicates anomalous convergence aloft, which forces air to sink. That suppresses thunderstorms and suppresses tropical activity. As the MJO starts moving back into the Western Pacific, that induces sinking in our area of the world, and uh, that reduces the chances of tropical formation. It does not put them to zero. We can still have storms because it's the peak of the season, and we'll likely see one or two more pop off Africa here and try to develop on their way across the Atlantic. Um, but things are looking quieter than normal as we head into September, and that's basically what we've expected for this season. Uh, crystal ball is storm number three. We usually have a lot more than that by this time, and September 10th, uh, the first two weeks of September are really the most active of the entire season. Those look like they're going to be quieter than they usually are, and probably most of September as well, but we'll have to see if any of these waves come across and become a threat to develop in the main development region. You will, of course, hear about it here. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.